Hi friends, welcome to another edition of First Look. You know, today here in uh, Southwest Missouri, it's kind of hot and muggy and forgive all the gnats that are flying around. Uh, you know, in the September, October issue of American Handgunner Magazine, I wrote the cover feature on a pair of new stainless steel arms core revolvers, uh, a 22 Magnum, the four inch one, and a 38 357, the shorter barreled one. Well, today we're gonna take a look at the AL22M which is the 22 Magnum version. And I think you're gonna find out you're gonna like it. A lot of people say there's a revolver renaissance right now. And frankly, I don't think there's ever not been a revolver renaissance if there's such a thing. Uh, I think today's manufacturing ability with CNC and uh, this cadre of design engineers they have around the world today, uh, they just keep churning out these interesting high quality, accurate, practical revolvers that frankly are also usually a lot of fun to shoot. The AL-22M is actually imported from the Czech Republic. Uh, it was an established revolver design from an established company there. And the Czech manufacturing ability is famous uh, around the world for high quality and precision. This gun is a 22 Magnum uh, chambering. It's got an eight shot capacity, a four inch barrel. It's about nine and a half inches overall and about 1.4 inches wide. So it's, you know, think K-frame Smith & Wesson, although it's slightly different. It weighs 38 ounces, give or take a little bit. Front sight is a fixed ram sight with an insert, fully adjustable rear. It comes with a really comfortable rubber grip. The gun's all stainless steel, a single double action, of course. Trigger pull on this one is about three and a half pounds single action and about 13 pounds double action. MSRP, is $794. I'm kind of seeing it in the 650 range uh, in the real world. And you know, there's a couple of other features on this gun, which I think is actually pretty clever. Uh, I probably should have taken the grips off, but right on here on the side plate, underneath the grips, there's an open hole that you can actually fit a slotted screwdriver in. And at first I was stymied by it. I couldn't figure out what that was for. And what it is, and it's darn clever, you can actually adjust the trigger return spring with the screwdriver. So tighten it one way, and it's a little you know, harder to pull, lighten it, and it's, it's lighter to pull, which affects the double action trigger pull. And I suppose at some level, the single action trigger pull, I'm not sure, probably. Uh, even in its lightest setting, I found the trigger to return reliably no matter what, no matter how fast you shot. So you're pretty safe to play within those parameters. I think if you're using the gun for defense, you'd probably want to really test it, you know, to make sure if you have it set in a lighter setting. The little pinhole on the side of the frame also kind of had me confused until I popped the side plate off. And then I realized you need a real thin, like a pin size probe. And what you do is you insert it in there to hold the part back while you reassemble the side plate and uh, you'd pretty much be impossible to do it without that. And the reason I know that is because I tried to do it without doing it and it was impossible. And uh, it's got your kind of conventional side plate with screws holding it in. So any pistol smith, even if he's not familiar with this particular model, would really have no problems working on this gun if you wanted to slick the action up or something like that. Even though the trigger has very uh, light serrations on it, they're nice and smooth. That way your uh, finger can kind of slide across it during the double action press. And uh, I was also actually impressed with the build quality of this gun. It's actually a very good quality gun. It shows uh, attention to detail, fit and finish as a, a really nice ergonomically uh, contoured cylinder release. And uh, well, I shot this gun quite a bit for the article that I wrote and I found it to be really accurate. I mean like 1.5 inches at 25 yards if you take your time and find the right ammunition. Uh, I was getting around 1200 feet per second for most 22 Magnum loads. I had a lightweight, kind of hot load, an old Federal load that I got almost 1,500 feet per second out of this. It would be quite a squirrel uh, howitzer, you know, at that velocity, I think. And, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the, sort of the similar size gun from you know, Taurus or, you know, Ruger or Smith & Wesson or something, I mean, you have basically that kind of a platform. So it's a little on the heavy side, uh, reliable, smooth, well-made, accurate. Uh, what's not to like? Speaking of uh, liking, let's shoot it. Okay, we're set up at about 15 yards here, give or take a little bit. I've got eight shots of arm score 
Uh, it's a uh, 1250 feet per second, give or take a little bit over my chronograph from this gun. And uh, we're just gonna shoot eight shots, double action offhand, just to give you an idea of what it's like. Let's see what happens here. Oh, this is an iPal. Uh, I use this, uh, it's like a peep sight and it really helps when you're shooting iron sights. There'll be a link down below. All right, let's get this done here. Well, one of them rolled off a little bit surprising, so uh, let's go see how terrible I did. Well, it's not anything I'm really proud of, so uh, I, I think this one caught me off guard. Really, this gun shoots, I mean, like, there or better than that. And uh, I think, let's see, my list of excuses, it's hot, I'm sweaty, there's gnats, I, you know. Anyway, that's some idea. Let's shoot a defensive target just to see what happens. Well, we're set up here at about five yards away. And the reason why we're doing this is I just want to show you. In something like this, you've got a 22 Magnum, eight shots, a very safe double action revolver, uh, no safeties to fuss with, no magazine. Is it loaded? Is it unloaded? I don't know. What do I do? Uh, so if you have a novice shooter, if you're recoil shy, uh, there's a lot of advantages to this. And so, and I'm going to show you what you can do. So uh, let's uh, light up this target and see what happens here. You can see it's easy to shoot. There's virtually no recoil, and you can throw just like a, a, a hailstorm of 22 Magnum ammunition downrange. Okay, well, you're nothing to write home about, but that's not what this is about. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of people who would argue the point that having your pattern dispersed you know, around a torso is a good idea. And uh, so you can see we've got really good center hits here, uh, less than palm sized. And I promise you, nobody is gonna stand around and say, oh, that's only a 22 Magnum, I'm not afraid. No, this is a real effective, viable option for you as a kind of a home defense uh, or trail gun. This is the awesome, magnificent hydrostatic stopping power of the 22 Magnum. So let's see what happens here. All right. I may get wet, I'm not sure. All right, well, that wasn't too bad, actually. I mean, I expected a little less than that. So <laughs> I don't know what it proves, other than it proves it's okay to have fun with fun little guns like this. A 22 revolver, especially a 22 Magnum, is versatile, accurate, uh, controllable, fun. Uh, I think it checks off a lot of categories. Uh, you can even put it to use as a defensive gun uh, should the need arise. And so uh, the Arms Corps' the parent company, Rock Island, uh, is the one who brings this in from the Czech Republic. And uh, I think if you're looking for a 22 Magnum sort of, you know, trail pistol, do everything gun, uh, this new model from Rock Island is probably uh, something you should take a peek at. So around six, 650 in the real world. And uh, I think that about wraps it up. I really like this gun and it's uh, really behaved itself in the time that I've had it and probably will continue to. Hey, remember the four firearm safety rules. Subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please post them. Uh, I love to chat with you guys and uh, I'll keep an eye on, on what you have to say. And until the next time, uh, take a new shooter shooting, would you?